After being cut from his high school basketball team, he went home, locked himself in his room, and cried. He wasn't able to speak until he was almost four years old, and his teachers said he would never amount to much. Was demoted from her job as a news anchor because she wasn't fit for television. Fired from a newspaper for lacking imagination and having no original ideas. At age 11, he was cut from his team after being diagnosed with a growth hormone deficiency, which made him smaller in stature than most kids his age. At 30 years old, he was left devastated and depressed after being unceremoniously removed from the company he started. A high school dropout whose personal struggles with drugs and poverty culminated in an unsuccessful suicide attempt. A teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything and that he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Rejected by Decca Recording Studios, who said, We don't like their sound. They have no future in show business. His first book was rejected by 27 publishers. His fiancée died, failed in business, had a nervous breakdown, and was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never tried anything new. I don't know what famous student is sitting in my room right now. Coach Alex don't know what famous student is sitting in the room. But what we do know is every student would experience success, okay? That's what we do know. Uh, we got four easy ways, or four ways that we're going to achieve high levels of success in the classroom, all right? And they're coming up in each one of the videos that, that's coming up next. In this classroom, the way I care myself, the way Coach Alex care, everybody cares themselves, there are no dumb people that we teach. We don't teach any dumb people, okay? No people that, that we consider dumb, all right? People just start at different levels and we build them up, all right? So in order, the first, the first of the steps is we have to at least try, okay? So we're not trying because you feel like you're deficient or something. You have to at least try to, to, to put forth an effort so that we can get authentic information about what you know and what you don't know. That's the first step into... Uh, having a highly successful year in biology and not just biology the, the whole year, all right? Now, the second step, I need laser-like focus while you're trying. This, this, this will allow us to, again, have authentic and real information about you. First you try, put forth the effort, then, then you have authentic, uh, real understanding of stuff that you learned and stuff that you didn't learn, and that'll come out when we get ready to go to our fourth step, okay? Our, our third step, our third step. Now, our, our third step, we're going to be able to take what you didn't do right, analyze the data, as you can see all over my face. We're going through it. We're moving stuff out the way. We're shaping it up. And then we're going to pull out the weakest point as a class, and then we'll pull out the weakest point as an individual student, reteach, re-give an assessment, make sure you got the game, your game tight, and now you're good. That's how this thing gonna run. Those are the four areas. Those are the four ways that we're gonna be having a highly successful year. Everybody that passed this little stupid star, despite the whole COVID-19 and everything else that's going on with it. Step number four, we're gonna have data-driven intentional teaching. So I'm gonna look at the data and determine where you 
need to grow, and then this is how we're going to measure your growth. So part of this is going to come from Coach Alex and I, all right? So we can be able to see inside of your learning process. Losing is not Now it's time to get into the next next unit, next series that we're doing. Um, it's, it's entitled, Do You Know How What You Eat Eats? Okay? Do you know how what you eat eats? Let's get into the video, and then we get into the lesson, and then we get into the data-driven instruction, and then we get into the four steps, and then we'll be highly successful, and then class will be over, we'll be on to something. I'm out. M Block for life. Five clever ways plants eat. Number five, stagnant water can be poor in nutrients. To make up for this relative poverty, the bladderwort has evolved a method of catching water fleas to eat. Small leaves are modified into hollow balls with a door at one end. Water is pumped out from the interior of the bladders so that there is a pressure difference. Beside the door are pressure sensitive hairs. Now the plant plays a waiting game, something plants tend to be very good at. As soon as a water flea touches one of these sensitive hairs, the door to the bladder opens. In less than a millisecond, the bladder sucks in water and the unfortunate water flea. There, digestive enzymes dissolve the still living flea. Once digestion is complete, the trap is reset to await its next guest. Number four, pitcher plants have evolved to deal with their nutrient poor environments in a way that is a threat, not just to insects, but also to small mammals and reptiles. Pitcher plants drown their prey. Highly modified leaves create pitchers, which catch rainwater. This water is then impregnated with chemicals that help to dissolve anything which falls into it. The interior side of the pitchers is too slick for anything to get a grip on. Once inside, the animal finds no way to get out. It drowns, dies, and is digested for the benefit of the plant. The presence of a dead animal inside may draw more animals to investigate, where they may tumble in to repeat the cycle. Number 3. Venus flytraps are probably the best known of all carnivorous plants. Many children are given them as entertainingly horrifying gifts. In the wild, the Venus flytrap is considered to be threatened, and it grows only in the wetlands of North and South Carolina. In their wetland home, the ground is poor in nutrients, so they have evolved a highly complex trapping mechanism for insects and spiders. The end of their leaves is modified into a pair of jaws fringed with spikes. On the inside of the trap are sensitive hairs. When an insect crawls over the trap, it triggers the hairs. To avoid accidental closing, the trap is only sprung when two different hairs are touched within 20 seconds. Once the trap is set off, it closes around its prey. The insect continues to struggle, triggering more hairs and keeping the trap shut. The trap seals around the prey and digests it, opening to reveal the indigestible husk of the insect. Number 2. Sundews take a more relaxed approach to trapping insects for nutrients. The sundews have developed mucilaginous glands all over their leaves. These stalks produce blobs of sticky mucus. The mucus tends to be loaded with sugars that lure the insects to them. But from the moment the insect lands, it is lost. Struggling to be released from one tentacle, the insect will connect with others, trapping itself more thoroughly. If that were not enough, the tentacles themselves are also mobile. They move toward the insect until it is entirely covered. In some species, the entire leaf curls around the trapped prey to ensure it cannot escape. The sweet mucus, which first got the insect to land, also contains the enzymes which will digest it. Number 1. The California pitcher plant is not content with the methods normally employed by pitcher plants to ensure that nothing escapes its digestive liquid. The California pitcher plant uses mind tricks to keep insects inside. Instead of catching rainwater to fill its pitcher, this plant regulates the level inside by pumping in water. This is necessary because the pitcher plant has a curved entrance to the pitcher. This allows things to crawl in. But once its prey is inside, the plant hides the exit from view. Not content with simply hiding the exit, the body of the pitcher has translucent areas 
false exits. Insects trapped inside will cluster around these seemingly obvious escapes, never looking for the real one. Tired by their efforts, they slip deeper into the pitcher to be digested.